Hi, we're Ralph and Lonnie back with another episode of Planetary Calendar. And Ralph just had to remind me what day, month, year it is because we're busy working on the calendar for 2021. In fact, it's already off at the printer. So it's hard to keep track of where we are, but I think we are in October of 2020. Yes. So let's look at the forecast that we wrote probably 18 months ago. Hope it's right. <laughs> the lunations. October is calm with a slow Mercury and a fast Venus. Communications falter, but socializing rules. A. The Libra Aries full moon on the first has Venus conjunct the royal star Regulus, adding a heartfelt warmth. Regulus is, is one of those very beneficial stars. When things line up alongside them, you really feel it. It's very distinctive. The moon conjunct Chiron and Mars is focused on well-being within limits. The constricted Libra new moon on the 16th is saved by its conjunction with the high-frequency star Spica, inspiring productivity and noble missions. Work with people you love toward goals that bring satisfaction. Just a little comment there. Spica is the brightest star in Virgo, which is the largest constellation in the sky and has a very strong sense of having a mission. And uh, you should expect that people at that time are going to be very focused on what it is they want to accomplish in the world. So honor that. On the 31st, the Halloween Scorpio Taurus Blue Full Moon. That's a mouthful. Oh, yeah. is tied to Uranus and Taurus. There is abundant power, but limited eclectic outlets. Behold the unexpected. This Uranus and Taurus has just done all kinds of stuff in terms of changes in the climate and changes in the financial world. Big, big time. Well, and just to reiterate, you know, Taurus is not a sign that does well with the Uranus energy and vice versa. You know, I mean, Taurus is stable and... Uranus is unstable, so mm. that gives you the overview right there. Well, right now, I mean, we're doing this in what month are we in? Are we in May? We're in May. Okay. And the financial world has really gone through big, big changes recently. And Uranus and Taurus is a, uh, an aspect that we've been warning people about for a while because the last time Uranus was in Taurus was during the Great Depression. Yes. Mm. So... Thanks for reminding me. Oh, yes. Days to watch. You know, we've actually, in our forecast, we've understated a lot of times because we don't want to alarm people while saying, hey, watch out for this. But, don't, you know, we don't want to frighten people. But Well, you know, it's always a fine line to give enough people enough information to kind of be prepared for mm. various possibilities and yet not write anything in stone because there's other planets. There's other you know, your own personal life is going to uh, highlight by your transits different aspects of these these larger transits. You know, they're going to resonate to you in one area of your chart, not in the other area of the chart. So there's so many possibilities, but we mm. want to kind of touch on the major ones so that you have an idea of what you should plan for. Right. And, you know, the way you think about these things matters. Right. You know, you've got enough people thinking in a certain way and you actually change the entire paradigm but we digress yes days to watch on the second right at the beginning of the month venus enters virgo so sense other people's needs for love and put them first on the fourth still early in the month pluto turns direct on the ninth a black box day promotes obsessive pursuits don't be frustrated by people's failure to serve your your ambitions mm. On the 12th, the white circle accelerates projects. So if you're working on something around the 12th, you know, those that group of days, push it along. On the 13th, a black box day. Mercury turns retrograde, tangling communication. So use that window well. On the 18th, the black box day requires extreme focus to move projects along. Good thing everyone has a strong sense of mission. <laughs> on the 22nd, the sun enters determined Scorpio. And then on the 27th, Mercury and Venus enter Libra together. Expect some turbulence, but Venus rules, so stay focused on your relationships. It's quite a month. 
It seems like, you know, Libra you think should be calm and peaceful. No, not really. <laughs> well, I think you're going to review the meditations and the oh. uh, essential oils quickly so that we can talk about some of the featured <clears throat> days here on the yes. on the calendar with the circles and the black boxes, which I, I feel bad about that because I said circles, plural, but there's only one white circle. Only day. one white circle, no. but... Two, oh, four black four box. black boxes. Yeah, it's days. one of the, you can tell right at the beginning of a month. You can tell it's going to be one of those days, one of those months when you're going to have to really push your shoulder to the the task. Don't steal my thunder. I'm going no, to no, go no, into no, detail. No, no. Okay, on October first starts off. The first is the full moon meditation. Your hardest won life experience provides the necessary tools for healing early emotional scars, helping you become a more capable partner. Remember, you have the tools from your life experience to go back and help your childhood self become a better, fuller, more complete person. The blend of essential oils, oh, this is a lovely one, bergamot and vanilla. Ah, this could almost be in Taurus. Uh, place them in sections one and seven, so middle of the left wall and middle of the right wall of your home. Hey, Libra likes uh, bergamot. Oh, yes, she does. No. October 16th, New Moon Meditation. Balance the myriad aspects of your personality amid the passions of life through discipline and determination. Seems to be a theme. That focus allows your gifts to manifest prolifically. And the single oils, we suggest either sage or cedar. Sage is so well known because it really encourages wisdom. The discipline oils. Yeah, yes, exactly, yes. <laughs> Mental and physical discipline by sage yeah, exactly. and cedar. That's great. Yes. Uh, so, you know, that white circle is very nice tucked in there among the first two, anyway, black boxes. And uh, Ralph was talking about the fact that, you know, it's a productive, your productive self uh, with uh, Venus, Mercury, Mars, Neptune, Sun, Moon, all well aspected. <laughs> And that diligent moon in Virgo. Mm. Of course, that doesn't change to Virgo until in the evening, but you're coming up out of that Leo moon. At least you'll have the fire and the energy to, mm. to be productive and creative. So uh, that white circle, put that one good to good use because the black boxes uh, run rampant in the uh, rest of the month. But I want to mention that that black box on the 13th is largely due to Mercury going retrograde. Mm. Even though Mercury is well highlighted by the moon, uh, as is Venus and a uh, double Uranus there. Uh, but um, the sun is also opposing Mars. So you're kind of thwarted at a couple of different levels mm. of uh, progress there. Intimate but when Mar Mercury goes retrograde, it's going to join Mars, who's already retrograde. Mm. Uh, and that's physically challenging, as well as the mental challenges that come from the Mercury retrograde. And it joins the fact that um, uh, Uranus is retrograde and Neptune and Pluto. Mm. So now you're going to have five planets retrograde. The outers are not as, you know, personal. harshly felt as the personal planets. But they certainly do have an effect, especially if you are pursuing endeavors that are Uranian in nature Right. Sounds to me like uh, right, the strong. internet and, mm -hmm. you know, connecting to your larger community with, with both Mercury, Mars, and Uranus all retrograde is, is kind of a hard challenge. And uh, so beware and mm -hmm. plan ahead so that you're not looking for things that are going to be thwarted by mm -hmm. these retrograde energies and, and really think them through. And realize this Mars and Aries is retrograde for the whole month. And it's in its rulership sign. It's the masculine or external sign. Mercury spends most of the month up to the 27th, when it actually um, retrogrades into Libra in Scorpio. Another Mars sign, the feminine Mars ruling sign. So these two planets, Mercury and Mars, are you know kind of on the chessboard. They're the pawns. In fact, we describe them that way in our book, our companion book. We describe them as the pawns. Other ones like to get out there in front and do stuff. Go, go do that. Take this the to the infantry. store for me. You know, right. The kids and the infantry, they're the young people who are just too young to realize that there could be danger. So they'll run right into stuff. So having both of these in retrograde at the same time in the martial ruled signs means that in terms of your physical work, your physical progress, it's all retrograde. 
focus on your inner self. This is a great time for yoga. This is a great time for focusing on your nutrition. If you don't do that, you may find that you get very frustrated because yeah. these energies want to push out. But if you direct them to where you want them to go in terms of your personal self-development and improvement, you'll get a lot of benefit from them. Because mostly, we don't focus on our personal self. We focus on, I mean, after we you know do our stuff in the morning in front of the mirror, the rest of the day, we're just out there. But this is really about diet, exercise, being in balance, yoga, tai chi, you know, things that things what that center you could really benefit at this time. And isn't frustration a synonym for retrograde? Well, <laughs> yes, yes, it is. In fact, look in the dictionary. I'm sure it says that. I'm sure it says that. Well, Pluto does turn uh, direct on the fourth. Mm. Yeah, but that's, that the one, that's the one. That's the one. That's the one you feel least personally of all. That's true, but once it goes direct, maybe it will leave my rising sign. But Pluto is Where it's been forever. And it's on the cover of the 2021 calendar this year. Because we want to kiss Capricorn goodbye. So. Right. Well, it's Pluto and it's Pluto with that beautiful heart picture on the cover yeah. of, the, of the calendar yeah. this, this year. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Well, and I think that, you know, 2021 is going to be sort of a profound year after all the changes that mm. we've gone through in 2020. I think it's kind of appropriate to have... Pluto be the lead in for 2021 because look how many things you've had to burn down and start mm. over again uh, in with all the changes that we've managed to survive in 2020. So, by the way, if you like looking for meteors, we have two meteor showers this year around the 13th, and these are, I mean, around the 7th, I mean, and we, we focus on the peak, so you have to look it up to see when the best spot is for you. Uh, the Draconid meteors peak on the 7th, October 7th, and the Orionids meteors peak on the 21st. Now, if your name happens to be or or Orion or Oriana, this would really be the one you'd want to look at, right? <laughs> well, how about if your name is Draco? Or Draco, too. That so, would be the one on the 7th. They should the really take, take some time to get outside and look at the meteors and enjoy the night sky. Um, obviously, the um, black box on the 18th is is got a whole lineup of mm. uh, characters involved in squares and oppositions with the Venus, the Saturn, the Neptune, Jupiter. It's a little too plugged in. Mars, Sun. I mean, you know, too who's, many voices who's missing. Yeah, there's too many voices. Well, and they're all at odds with each other. So. Luckily, it's on a Sunday. Exactly. So, great time to go out for, for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Someplace without a line. And then you have the sun enters um, Scorpio on the 22nd. And then we have the final, uh, and then with that 27th. On the 27th, when two planets change sign at the same time, it's like a bump in the road. You really feel this. Like, it's like the gears are all changing. It's like when you, the old stick shifts when you would drive, maybe in a truck, and you had to change the gears. That was that point where you kind of just had to coast because the, you know, it got into the next gear. It's a little bit like that. And on the 31st, we have the full moon. Well, I just want to mention, <clears throat> Ralph, just in case you would forget <clears throat> about the, you know, the turbulence and the, you know, he mm. wrote the word turbulence on the 27th right. to show that, you know, when these planetary motions happen, you know, they're a little disruptive. So. Yeah, didn't I, I was supposed Not to erase quite that. a black box, <laughs> but, you know, I like when you put a little heads up on there when okay. there's room. Yeah, it you is. You know, a little keyword. Mm. Yes. And the black box, you know, it's, it's the blue moon. Because uh, we have the full moon on the 1st, and then we have the next full moon on the 31st of the blue moon. It's also, of course, on Halloween. Um, we have a lot of things like that. The fact that the moons are lining up with, um, we have planets lining up with both uh, Regulus and Spica, major stars, is actually a very beneficial thing in some ways. But like I said, internalized. Stars so major that they're referred yeah. to as the royal stars. Exactly. There are There's a group yeah. of them, and and yeah. when you have things hitting there... Uh, it's kind of a profound influence on everybody because yeah. the stars usually have some more personal influence. Mm. But when they're, they hit these royal stars, mm. uh, everybody feels them depending yeah. on where they are in your chart. But on that 31st, really guard against too much external chaos because the only other planet that's involved there between the sun and the moon is Uranus. So Uranus is that it's like external chaos. So kind of guard against that. Watch out that you don't let too much of that into your life. So that's pretty much it, huh? 
Come back and see us for November. This is Ralph and Lonnie for Planetary Calendar, and you can always revisit any of our forecasts or any of our television shows at www.spaceandtime.com. See you next time.